The city of Malmö in Sweden is known for its criminality, especially regarding violent crimes. When two people with immigrant background were shot dead in 2003, the police suspected that they were dealing with an organized crime. The attacks continued to occur and soon put fear in the immigrants living in the city for years. Thirteen attacks later, the police finally arrested their suspected murderer. This is the case of Peter Mangs. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Elin and on this channel I cover true crime cases that have occurred in the Nordic countries. Some content warnings before we start this video. This video will include talks about racism and hate crimes, so if that's something that you don't want to watch, then I suggest you click out of this video right now. If you like my channel, please subscribe and now let's get into the case that happened in Sweden. So Peter Mangs was born on the 4th of March 1972 in Elmhult in Sweden. When Peter was two years old, his parents divorced and after that he grew up with his single mom and his seven-year-older sister. His mom worked very long hours as a waitress to support the family since she was a single mother, leaving Peter to care pretty much for himself. Both parents were described as absent during Peter's childhood, and his dad was also very violent. Peter looked up to his father a lot, but was very annoyed at his mom and his sister. When Peter was 17, his sister died from an overdose, but they were not on very good terms before that, so I'm not sure how much this actually affected him. His friends remember him as energetic and creative, and Peter enjoyed reading and having very good grades in school. Peter's uncle was an actor and artist, and Peter also had a big interest for music. When he went to high school, he studied music, and he later started building his own bass guitars, as well as playing in a band. He also educated himself in carpenting to be able to build bass guitars better. As an adult, he tried to succeed in music, and he even moved to his dad in Florida to hopefully succeed. There he recorded and released his own extended play, which was called Earthshaker, and it did not sell good at all. So he eventually came back to Sweden in fall of 2002, and he started studying to become a nurse, but actually soon quit the program. Some sources actually said that he failed due to not being social and not being able to work in teams. He instead joined a shooting club and got a gun license in 2002, as well as buying his own guns. In 2004, Peter started working as a dental assistant, but later stopped working with this as well. His friends describe him as an odd person living in an apartment in a particularly Swedish area in Malmö. Peter also started having more and more racist opinions as he glorified the white race, especially himself. He hated multiculturalism as he thought that the foreigners in Sweden did not have the right to be in Sweden. He even looked up to Hitler. The fact that he saw himself as superior to others combined with his racist opinions would end up in events that terrorized the city of Malmö for years. So the shootings, also known as the Malmö shootings, were a string of attacks that happened in Malmö in Sweden between 2003 and 2010. The first known attack, carried out with a 9mm Glock 19 handgun, started as early as 2003. The shooter then killed two randomly selected people based on their names. One of the victims had a Middle Eastern background and the other had African. After this, there was a break and in the end of 2009, the attacks continued. In October 2009, a 20-year-old girl was shot and killed while sitting in a car near a mosque. She was assassinated execution style with three shots from close range late at night. Her 21-year-old friend, a Swedish-Albanian, was also shot and seriously injured. The woman was the only Swedish victim who was in the company of a friend of immigrant origin, so when this happened, the police thought that she was not the original target. 
Later in the month, several of shots were fired against an apartment in Malmö. The police at this point believed that the shootings were connected to some kind of organized crime. In December of 2009, shots were fired against a mosque in Malmö. No one was hit, but an imam was injured in the neck by broken glass. And for those of you who don't know, an imam is the person in Islam who leads the prayer or who just advise people when it comes to religious matters. In 2010, the shooting started to increase. In January 2010, a 17-year-old boy was shot in the chest and a 36-year-old man was shot in the leg outside of a store in Malmö. Police suspected that the 17-year-old boy was the target, while the 36-year-old was shot by accident. The attacks soon spread fear among the immigrant population of Malmö. Many people were frightened, especially families with kids. The local police warned against panic, pointing out that the risk for any individual of being shot was very low. At the same time, they warned people of ethnic minorities to be out alone after dark, since this was when the attacks were taking place. In March of 2010, shots were fired against a house in Malmö. The target was probably the 22-year-old man who escaped the attack on 10th of October. A 21-year-old and a 22-year-old were also attacked at close range while sitting in a car. The 21-year-old was hit several times, while the 21-year-old escaped. In June of 2010, three African men were shot while getting out of a taxi. One was hit, but received only a burn wound. A 30-year-old man were also shot through the window of a gym, and he was hit two times in the back. Only 40 minutes after the previous shooting, a 29-year-old was shot in the shoulder while sitting in a car. In August of 2010, a fast food restaurant was shot at. The bullet went straight through the building and hit a car on the other side, but no one was hit. The owner claims to have seen a laser light immediately before the shot was fired. In September of 2010, a 31-year-old man received a flesh wound to the head when he was shot outside the university hospital. In October of 2010, a 47-year-old man was shot in the stomach at a bus stop. The bullet went through his body, but the injuries were not serious. In an incident similar to this one, a 27-year-old man was shot in the back at close range while waiting for the bus. The bullet pierced through the victim's lung, leaving serious damage. A 16-year-old boy was also fired at, but he was not hit. On the same night, two women were shot through a window. In October 2010, as many as 15 shootings were linked to the same suspect, whom the police had not yet been able to identify. The murders were actually linked through forensic evidence, since the same gun had been used in the attacks. So the police were looking into Peter Manx for a while and thought that he was acting very strange. On the 6th of November 2010, the Swedish police stormed an apartment in Malmö and later announced that they had arrested a man that they suspected was the shooter. According to Malmö police, he was now under suspicion of one murder and seven murder attempts. The man arrested was a 38-year-old Swedish man and this was Peter Manx. The police had gotten a tip from one of Peter's friends who shared the same values as him after Peter proudly had talked to him about the crimes committed. The police had also put forward a profile of the killer that matched Peter. Comparisons were made to the so-called laser man who committed 11 shootings of people of immigrant origin in the Stockholm and Uppsala area in 1991 to 1992, but he only killed one. During nights, Peter was strolling around with his gun, trying to find victims among the immigrants in Malmö. He was often masked, making it hard to recognize him. Peter Manx was charged with killing three people and the attempted murder of 12 people. So in the trial, there was a lot of technical evidence against Peter, but he did claim that he was innocent and only confessed to the vandalism charges. 
The lead prosecutor in the case pictured him as a troubled and lonely man who saw himself as somehow superior to others, but who had trouble coping in social settings. She also said that he had been seeking psychiatric help twice before the shootings in 2003, as he had an interest in death and the fear that he was going to hurt someone. On the 23rd of November 2012, Monks was found guilty of two counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder and three cases of making aggravated illegal threats. Peter Manx was sentenced to life in prison by the Malmö District Court. He was also ordered to pay damages of over 1 million crowns. He appealed this sentence and it actually kind of backfired since they convicted him of additionally three attempted murders on April the 25th, 2013. A further request for appeal was denied by the Swedish Supreme Court in June of the same year. According to the court, uh, Peter displayed extreme recklessness and a complete lack of empathy towards other people. The court also wrote in a statement, and I will read it straight from here. Based on forensic psychiatric evidence presented in the case, Peter Mungs didn't suffer from any serious mental illnesses at the time of the deeds or during examinations. Thus, there is no reason to give him special treatment when it comes to his punishment. He has, however, been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a mental disorder where you usually have problems when it comes to nonverbal communication and social interaction, as well as a personality disorder. I was not able to find the exact personality disorder that he had, but the personality disorder makes it hard for him to read other people and relate to them. Manx also accused a judge who heard the case of being biased and demanded a retrial, but his request was rejected. Residents of Malmö welcomed the verdict for a man who had terrorized their city for years before his arrest. For the people in their city, it had been a scary time and the sentence came as a relief. Now, the fact that this was a hate crime was never even brought up in the trial, despite the fact that it was very clear that the motive behind the murders was racism. Many people find this hard to believe, since he clearly targeted people of color, and his political motives were typically overlooked by everyone except the people in the targeted communities. Peter Manx has later confessed in letters to one of the victim's sisters that he dislikes the multicultural society and the reasoning for everything that he did was political. He also confessed to choosing his victims only according to their looks, names, or if they belonged to a group of people that he claimed had no right to live in the city of Malmö. These were Afro-Swedes, Muslims, Roma, and race traitors. And race traitors are, for example, white women dating a person of color. He has also stated that he killed his third victim, the Swedish woman, as a punishment for being a white woman who betrayed her race. And I quote from his own words now. It was a territorial conflict. If a woman chooses a man from an alien tribe which is something that I don't think he's entitled to, then she represents a threat, and that's why I popped her. So all in all, he was jealous of this woman picking a man from another race and not someone Swedish and white, which kind of shows his own view of women. I mean, who the hell is he to tell her who she can date and not? I mean, it, it just makes me so angry. He also claimed that he wanted to start a race war similar to Hitler. He also had many contradicting opinions. For example, he liked Afro music, but he did not like the Afro people. And he also liked Arab food, but not the Arabic people, which kind of like this kind of thinking is actually pretty normal when it comes to racists. Some witnesses claimed in court that Peter just liked some immigrants while he disliked others for some reason. He had also been planning and dreaming about committing this crime for a very long time and thought that this would make him a hero. Peter's psychologist says that Peter was looking for attention and confirmation from his dad, but he basically never got it. She also tells a story from Peter's life that was seen as very important for his future actions. One day his mom came home very upset and said that people with 
immigrant background or foreigner background had been threatening her. Peter had gone to confront these men, but actually ended up being the one getting scared and ran away from the scene. He then saw these people from his apartment window and told his mom that he could have just shot them from up there while pointing his fingers as he would be holding a gun. But that's all that I have for this case, and this case just infuriates me so much. Like, I just simply cannot understand his actions or his way of thinking at all. And it's hard to imagine the fear that all the immigrants had in Malmö during this time. I also can't imagine the damage that he would have done if he would have actually hit all the targets. Like, the fact that he was a bad shot was actually good in this situation. I also think that it's interesting how I have heard many people complain about the criminality among immigrants in Malmö and that all the immigrants commit so many crimes in Malmö, but I've never heard about this crime before, where the immigrants are actually the victims, so I think it's important to also spread awareness about this crime, and not just blame all the immigrants for the problems in the city. Anyway, my thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families as usual, but I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next case. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>